Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. I just saw a film that left me positively devastated. I don't think I've ever seen anything so brutal or disturbing in many, many years. And sitting next to me, well, what made it most disturbing is that it's based on a true story. And it was a story that I vaguely remembered from the 90s. But this was horrifyingly brought back to reality to me, thanks to the stunning acting of Rory Culkin. Yes, of that family. Macaulay is his older brother, and Rory is the seventh child and the baby of the family. Mm -hmm. And the movie, which you can now see here in New York, and it'll be expanding next week, it's called Lords of Chaos, and it stars Rory Culkin and co-stars Emery Cohen, who was even, I mean, just one of the scariest people I've ever seen on film. <laughs> okay, so this is basically, it's it's the true story of a black, a pioneer of the black metal music movement from Norway. Mm -hmm. um, your character was a 17-year-old, started the group Mayhem, and everything dark is celebrated. And the character you play is kind of what I thought the whole deal is with death metal and black metal, that it's kind of a protest and defiant and everything that's the worst thing on earth is what you're celebrating. But it's done in a tongue-in-cheek way, a safe form of protest. But then this group Mayhem well, they lose their lead singer to a horrifying, stunning, really brutal on film suicide. I mean, that was just so difficult to watch because you're the films that come out of Norway and Sweden are particularly bloody and gory. <laughs> Maybe because both of those countries are known for being so peaceful. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just my theory. But you have a new lead singer, but the new lead singer buys into this crap, really thinks that the black black metal should be celebrating everything awful, burning down churches, murder. Uh, and then your character, and this happened in real life, people, if you don't remember, in the 90s, the lead singer of Mayhem was murdered by this guy. Right. I... First of all, why why did you do this movie? <laughs> and and does that impress you that I was so completely horrified? Is that what you're going for? I mean, there's definitely horrific elements to it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, aside from I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but it'll never leave me, it's, and that says something. Uh, I hope you appreciated it. I guess yeah, it's it's a fascinating story. Um, and after we shot it, I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange. Uh, strange story, but yeah, it's just about how how promotion can get out of control, and how different members of this band Mayhem sort of had different definitions of what Norwegian black metal was, and um, yeah, it just spiraled out of control and, and led to a a, a brutal murder. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a fascinating story, and I never read anything like it, so I thought I'd better be a part of this. You know, did you? <clears throat> how did you first hear about this group? Was it because of the script, or did you know about it because you're into music? No, I mean, I, I knew about the, the church burnings. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, they have some good music, but they're most notable for their um, publicity stunts. Um, but that's a hell of a stunt. I mean, that's a horrific, horrible thing to do. I mean, right. it's, it's a crime, and it's also a, a moral crime. Right, right. I mean, and you can look at it different ways. You know, are they... Are they terrorists or are they kids that are just – it's next level egging. You know what I mean? Like instead of throwing eggs at a house, let's burn it down. You know what I mean? They, they were extremists and they didn't realize, um, you know, the repercussions and, and – um, you know, and, and, and a firefighter died trying to put out one of these church – you know, and I, I don't take that lightly. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't – I didn't do this movie trying to make them look cool. Um, I was trying to just show – these kids for who they what they were which were kids you know what i mean people now lionize these guys um but they i think they forget that they were just kids that your idols are kids and uh 
you know, that I'd like to think that my character, Euronymous, didn't believe these things he was preaching. Uh, and he was but he did participate in the church burnings. He did. He did. And, and um, you know, it's, that's sort of um, – got to understand that, you know, Ozzy Osbourne was a big deal. And, and he was biting the heads off of, uh, off of doves on stage. And, Once. You know, once, yeah, you know what I mean. There, but there are these theatrics that are uh, that are extreme, and I think Mayhem sort of took that and ran with it and tried to outdo um, the current, you know, rock, you know, legends. Um, yeah. But you see, what I took from it, and maybe you know, I'm reading into it, but I'm I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around what happened. I mean, clearly. The 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 person who became the lead singer when the other one killed himself, clearly he was mentally ill. And therein, to me, lies the danger of promoting these groups like this, is that someone who's mentally ill can take what is supposed to be a publicity stunt, embrace it, and... And and be encouraged by it. Right. It's scary. Right. Right. It's scary. Right. And it's I don't know. It's a it's a strange. Where is that guy? By the way, is he still in prison? Varg. No, he's out. He has a family. He lives in. How's he and... out? He he killed someone. I know. Well, Norway, the maximum sentence is, uh, I believe, eleven years. Um. So yeah, he he killed people or someone, and um, and he admits it. He talks about it. But yeah, he 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 got out, and uh, yeah, he's a family now, and he puts out YouTube. Very strange YouTube videos. Uh, you know, he's he's very he's still anti-Semitic, and you know, he's still very sort of crazy, uh, and it's un unfortunate. But um, yeah, boy, God help his kids, uh, dude. I know it's it's a it's a strange one, but you know, didn't uh, didn't want to have anything to do with him uh, in the making of this movie. And, wow, yeah. eleven years you get out, you murder. Wow, eleven years. I know things are different in Norway. Ah, oh, all right. So the movie is Lords of Chaos. I, I have another musical question for you because I don't understand the difference. I'm I'm definitely I definitely did not get the metal gene, let alone death metal and black metal. But what's the difference between death metal and black metal? I mean, is there there? Yeah, I mean there there's differences in in the music, um, you know, in the style of music. Um, but I, I think a lot of it has to do with pr uh, promotion. Just you know, they they paint themselves to look like dead bodies, and they you know, uh, they, they burn churches, and they you know, I think it's just um, aesthetically it separates itself from from other genres, and uh, yeah, there's differences in the sound that's sort of hard to differentiate if you don't if, if you don't know the the genre, you know. You know, you were saying that I'm I'm speaking to Rory Culkin, and he stars in Lords of Chaos, which opened here in New York on Friday and is going to expand um, next week. Really, really disturbing film based on something that really happened. The the murder of uh, the founding member of Mayhem, uh, which was a pioneering black metal group from Norway, uh, the, the murder of the, of the founding member by his lead singer who replaced the other lead singer who killed himself. I mean, it's just, it's just, and and you were saying that that one of the disturbing things is that mayhem is now celebrated by young people. Doesn't that kind of scare you that this movie will encourage some bad things? I don't think so. I mean, I uh, like I said before, I, I, I'm I'm not trying to make them look cool, and I don't think we are. We're sort of examining them and and and. I guess poking fun a little bit because the, it is, you know, a lot of it is silly. Um, you know, they would, when I first uh, approached this film, um, I was looking at photos of them and they're very intimidating, scary young dudes in face paint. But then you try to deconstruct them really quick. And okay, so they're wearing face paint. Where did they get that face paint? From the Halloween shop. So they're wearing clown makeup. Okay, so they're like clowns. Oh, these guys are kind of silly. You know what I mean? There's like a way to strip them down and, 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 uh, not lionize them and not not put them on a pedestal. A pedestal, and, and I don't think uh, I don't think the film would encourages the kind of behavior. Uh, but I think it's a story worth telling, and uh, you know, I think it's worth examining. But uh, I hope it doesn't come off like we're 
patting them on the back and, and, you know, I don't know. Well, what's weird, and the director isn't here, the director couldn't be here because I wanted to talk to the director, is that it really starts off almost as a comedy. Mm -hmm. But I took that to mean that perhaps that was the way the group started. Like I said, you get the feeling that it was really started as, all right, we're going to do something that hasn't been done, Mm -hmm. and we're just going to be the most evil you could be, but it went in a tongue-in-cheek sort of way that completely got out of hand and like I said I felt it was mixed with mental illness for sure some undiagnosed mental illness is happening but uh yeah the film starts out it's a lot of fun in the first half and I think that's sort of the idea that this was meant to be fun you know this is meant to be promotion and we're we're supposed to have a good time and this is theater and then some people you know sort of ran with it and uh and didn't realize that it was just supposed to be theatrical fun um and I think that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about you, Rory Culkin, for a little bit, because you come from a, an acting family, the youngest of seven, Macaulay, Home Alone, your brother. Um, how did you decide to follow in his footsteps and get into acting? Is it like if, if you're in the McCulkey family, that's that's it. Yeah. Like, like the Coppolas. Like the I'm Coppolas. always having an argument with Mark Coppola who is Nicolas Cage's older brother. And the whole family is in the acting business. I mean, the whole family. Hmm. Yeah, not all of us. We're, there's seven of us, and only three of us have really gotten into it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just really took to it at a, at a young age. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, just, I just liked it. I enjoy it. Are you looking an awful lot like your brother. I, I hear that. I don't... I don't really see it. Of course, it, I haven't seen him for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is he doing? A Macaulay? He uh, he has this website called Bunny Ears that, that launched last year, and uh, he just started a podcast of the same name, Bunny Ears. Uh, and it's uh, it's just, it's a, it's a funny, it's a funny website, and, you know, he's got his own sense of humor that he's he's putting out there. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm into it. I'm actually going to be on his podcast next week, I believe. Yeah, talking about this movie. Yeah, he's helping me helping me promote it. Yeah, <laughs> this is a far cry from Home Alone. Oh yeah. What else would you like to do, Rory Culkin? Um, I would like to continue to act and and to tell stories like like this. And you know, my only concern is that after Lords of Chaos, I mean, I was attached to Lords of Chaos for four years before we shot it, and uh, you know, did a lot of studying and, and worked really hard on on the film. And now that you know, we're in the final stretch and, and it's coming out. Uh, I'm sort of like scared. Like, what am, now what do I do with myself? You know what I mean? I spent, you know, the second half of my 20s working on this on this movie and now it's going to be gone and I got to look for the next Lords of Chaos. So I'm a little concerned about that. Why did it take four years? Um, Was there resistance to putting this out? Yeah, if you could, you know, I'm sure you could imagine with the extreme story, I thought it would never get made. And, uh, you know, luckily there are enough people that, that enjoy the story and, and appreciate it that finally put some money into it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of feedback have you been getting? Where has it opened? Uh, it was at Sundance last year. And what was the reaction there? Very positive. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been very positive. Uh, you know, I think the, the only negative reviews it's getting or, or negative feedback is from certain aspects of the metal metal community who haven't seen the film yet, but, uh, black metal is a lot of, about, um, sort of being too cool for promotion and being being they're very cool they're like the hipsters of the metal world where you know that's not that's not real metal this is real metal that's not a real movie this is a real movie so you know what i mean it's sort of built in the genre to reject things um so uh, but it's not just for black metal fans i think it's for a broader audience and it's sort of just examining these people and i think it's even more interesting if you don't know the story and, and you're just sort of taking a, a peek and it's it's a real warning. Like I said, it's a warning about mental illness, but it's also a warning about, you know, things that can happen in your youth. You're not the same person necessarily at 17 that you're going to be at 30. Right. And not handling things the way I mean, this was really an extreme. Yeah. Like I said, I did not enjoy this movie. I cannot <laughs> see how anyone can use the word enjoy when you're talking about something like this because it feels like a documentary. You actually feel, I feel like I witnessed your murder because right. it was so realistic. Right. And, and 
painful it, and left me in a dark mood all day. But that said, that says that this was a filmmaking feat because if a movie can do that and make you think about it all day and put it, – it's the mark of something that is an experience. You and fa- not every movie is an experience. You found it interesting. You, interesting. Cool. Yes. Okay. I'll take And that. if you missed any part of this interview, you can catch up with it. First of all, we're going to have the video on our website, q1043.com. But also I have the podcast, Sunstein Sessions. Download the iHeartRadio app. New York's classic rock, Q1043.